I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 2022 Center West board meeting. Thank you for coming. Our agenda, we're going to start with the previous minutes. Um, part of the joke about that they now have restored from trash is I accidentally deleted the March meeting minutes. So I did watch the video and I did recreate them. So if you see any issues, please let us know so we can make changes and we can update it. Going on to new business, there's a couple different items I added as well as one from Thomas, um, Code of Conduct Committee. So one of the things Rich had been working on before he left was the new CentOS Code of Conduct. And then we had had discussions about putting together a group of people that could have Code of Conduct issues reported to them. Because of the fact that we share auth with Fedora, Sean and I met with Marie to see if we should possibly have a combined committee because what affects CentOS also affects Fedora. Um, after the discussion, we decided that we should have separate. So we will make any code of conduct decisions for our group, but then should someone be suspended or expelled from the community, we will then meet with Fedora so that they can plan accordingly, especially if it's a maintainer and vice versa. So if someone's gonna be suspended from Fedora for a breach of code of conduct, they're gonna let us know so we can meet and have a heads up on anything we need to be aware of and take action on. Are there any questions on that? So are the lawyers okay with that? I just wanna make sure that there isn't some weird unfair practice like discrimination where, oh, Fedora, kicked me out and now everybody else is kicking me out without have done something, especially if it's we very really, fedora centric instead of like, unless yeah, we don't have any option. If they're locked out of fast, they're locked out of CentOS. Okay. So with one OS system, oh. if you lock someone from one community, you lock them out from the other. Could we resolve this with group membership? Well, I guess it depends on what locked out actually means in this context, but it is like, we can use groups to control who can push packages and stuff. So depending on the okay, scope so of it, we might be, might be able need to use that. To look into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like banning someone from fast or right seems like a heavy hammer. Like I'm, I'm sure the situation where that is legitimate, but it seems like a very significant punishment. Yeah, from talking with Marie, they had 24 code of contact issues last year, but maybe only one of them came to that level. So we're not expecting this to be a usual thing that we're gonna have people that are locked out from CentOS from the Fedora side, but we just wanted to make plans for if it happens that we at least know in advance and can act on it. Oh, okay. I think I misunderstood how you described it the first time. It's only if there's a ban and it cascades into CentOS and not the it, fact that they had 23 other cases and they're sharing that information with us. No, they will not share that information with okay. us. And if we okay. have anything that, that, that does not that get was to that what, level, we won't share either. Um, okay. That is what I was uh, asking about as well. Okay. Yeah. At one point we thought about a joint group but historically sent to us has not had many issues and they've had 23. So we don't wanna add more work onto our people to deal with the Fedora people when only one or two things may ever get to the level where we need to act on it. Um, hang on, Rich is... Okay, Rich said, Amanda seemed fine with that outcome when it arose with the existing case. And I'm assuming that's the banning. Um, hang on, we're, we're going faster than I'm reading. As far as he knows, there is only one person who has ever been perma banned from Fedora and thus from CentOS by extension. So it's not something we're going to really have to deal with multiple times. We may never have to deal with it, but we wanted to meet and have a plan of action. Um, there is also some supplementary um, documentation that Marie's been working on. I have made a copy of it for CentOS so we can have similar rules and procedures, but I'm not at the level yet of sharing it. I'm still going through and replacing Fedora with CentOS and seeing if there's anywhere else that, where they talk about the Fedora council, if that, uh, that type of thing applies to us. So um, 
just and started so with the third for documentation. And so would that be something that the board chairs or would this be a community board? The Code chairs? of Conduct Committee? Code of Conduct, yes. Yeah, right now, any breaches of Code of Conduct go to Sean and the board. Or it goes to the board, I should say, and then Sean, if it is someone who is actually on the board. So it is coming to us right now. Um, the idea with the committee was to, if there were responsible people who wanted to volunteer within the committee to have them work on that. So um, we've also looked into that, potential training as well. The, the current page says to open a ticket um, with the board. And if you don't have access to the ticketing system to email me and that I will then create the ticket on your behalf and still take it to the board. Okay. That's the, I, I don't know that this is ideal, but it is the current uh, word. And we can look at that a little more closely if we need to. Um, can, that's people that aren't, too, too can people that aren't us make private tickets on that tracker? Because this seems like the kind of thing that would probably be a good idea to report as a private ticket. The, the page does say that it's a private ticket. I've not okay. tested the process, so. Uh, if you have so one, let me know, I'll check, yeah, I'll check the access if someone can't create private, but everybody should be able to create private tickets. All right. Yeah, I'd swear somebody created a private ticket by mistake a few years ago, but I could be thinking about a different project. Neil says that the COC tickets are separate and so that they can have private tickets. By default, yeah, I just read that. So there's a few things we need to look into on that process of creating the tickets. Um, and we can also flesh that out and what we want our procedure to be as we go through the supplementar supplementary documentation. And I'll try to have that out to the board with a shareable link by next week. Yeah, maybe having a dedicated repo instance for this is not a bad idea, if only to keep this compartmentalized. Yeah, and then if we get some responsible community members, we can add them to that repo very easily. And then any board private tickets stay board private and uh, they get what they need without complication. Yeah, Neil said another reason was to make it possible to um, hook an email up to it to generate the tickets. But he's not sure if that was ever done. So that might be worth looking into as well. I'd like it to be easy for people to make reports if they feel they're important. But my worry with email based tickets is that I still get about 50 emails a day from various nonsensical things. I got on some email list and we don't want to generate, you know, buy my neat web service hosting tickets in the COC forum because the spammer is having a fun day. Yeah. And as long as the tickets do um, trigger an email to us so that something's not sitting there because we don't know it's there, that would be good too. So, And like I said, this is very rudimentary. I just want to inform everyone of the discussions we had with Marie and, you know, move forward with this because it is something we do need to have organized and ready to go should there be an issue. Anything else on this? All right. Chair, co-chair, and secretary terms. This is actually in our governance, um, but I don't know how much visibility it's ever had. So basically, um, I want to make sure that once a year we do you know, check in, does the chair, co-chair, or secretary want to remain in their position? And do they have the support of the board to remain in that position? Also, does anyone want to step into those positions? So like I said, it's already in governance. So just making it, you know, putting it out there that I'll say January, every January, 
you know, with the first board meeting, we check in and see if we want to make any changes. And that'll help us, you know, if someone gets burnt out in the position they have, but is afraid to step down or they're not doing the job that, you know, the rest of the board would like them to do, you know, and if somebody just wants to step up because they feel like they can take that role. Any questions on this? Just a comment. So I'm still secretary and I know that last time we asked who wanted to be secretary, we had no feedback. So I'm happy to continue to be secretary until next January, if it's okay with you. After January, we can re have a vote. If someone wants to step up and be secretary, let me know. Uh, but uh, last time we asked, uh, we, we had no candidates. So by default, uh, and because I want to continue, I, I will stay secretary, but uh, if it's okay with you, I mean, if, uh, if you want, uh, let me know if you think it's a problem. So is there anyone who wants to step up into the role? All right, Thomas, you get to continue as secretary for the board. Okay, thanks, Amy. And I believe the next item on the agenda is you. Yeah, it was just a comment is I don't get a lot of feedback on the agenda. So I, I was thinking that maybe we should upgrade a bit the process. So what I'm thinking is I will build a next agenda before the meeting and I will make it a link in all the communication in the calendar and everything. So people will have access to the next agenda uh, starting right after this meeting and you can add things uh, that you'd like to discuss because the email, I sent email uh, over past year and I, I got really no feedback for the agenda. So I'm trying to give it a bit more visibility uh, if you have other ideas on how we can uh, be a bit more proactive on that, let me know and we'll improve, uh, and we'll improve it. The, the other thing I am doing for the next secretary, I'm trying to build a list of, uh, of tasks the secretary should then handle, like uh, the Zoom meeting, uh, how we manage Zoom because of the problem of last week. Uh, we fix uh, the cost. So Amy, David, and Sean are cost on, on the recurrent meeting now. So everybody should be able to, to start the meeting. So I think this is something that uh, won't happen again. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't know that uh, when you you don't add cost, nobody can start the meeting. So sorry about uh, the people for the delay last uh, when I was away. But uh, yeah, so if you have other ideas on the secretary role and more feedback, please uh, contact me or Amy or Sean. And Pat as well. And yeah, one of the advantages of doing the next agenda is it makes it a little easier to add agenda items and gives a little more freedom to the community and the other board directors to just go in there and add them. So that gives a little more ownership to these meetings and hopefully we'll help our process a little bit. Is there anything else on Thomas's, what Thomas has said? Sounds great to me. That's what I got. Okay, moving on to issues. We have one issue, number 81, clarify the CentOS position on Russia-Ukraine sanctions. I believe Sean has research with legal and they say the guidelines did not apply to open source from your comment within there. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, sorry if I spoke out of turn, I wasn't intending to speak on behalf of the board of the project, just um, the, the comment I gave was basically the public comment that I have from the export compliance at Red Hat with respect to our what we are legally required to do. Um, and you know, if, if the board wants to make uh, statements otherwise, then, then uh, the board can discuss that. Um, but um, as, as of right now, as far as I'm aware, um, there's no legal requirement to shut down any mirrors or, or do anything of that nature. Yeah, Sean, I, I think that was pretty clear. I don't think you did anything wrong there. No, not at all. Yeah, I, I love seeing that in there because I knew someone needed to ask the people and you had the data. Yep. Now that doesn't mean even though we are not legally obliged to do anything that we can't do anything, whether it's we make a decision that we do turn off mirrors or whether we just say we are in support of the Ukraine if those are things we want to do. So there's the legal aspect, there's the community aspect. So we can go 
you know, discuss that if anyone feels strongly that we should make a stance. That's one of those complicated things. Um, I, I've written extensively on pacifism, so I uh, tend to approach you know nonviolence as a choice. But when you're faced with violence, it's complicated. Yeah, my, my take on that is as well. If we cut like centos to all Russian people, we cut centos to people that are trying to do something in Russia as well. So this is why. Uh, for, 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 for me, it's very, very hard to, to take a stance, honestly, because I, I think it could backfire as well for people that are trying to go do some good as well. So I'm, I'm, I, I don't have a strong opinion, but just to raise my voice, I'm in support of Ukraine for, for a lot. Of, but I don't think like cutting the mirror will have a, a really an impact, but I may be wrong. Uh, so I don't know if someone has a strong opinion on it. I don't. I don't see it as an effective um, form of, uh, of protest for, for our case. But it's too easily routed around. I mean, all you would have to do is, you know, set up a, a secondhand mirror pulling from, from another mirror. And it's, uh, it, it doesn't really hurt the people that, that we would want to affect by a measure like this. I mean, we can make a statement that I don't, I don't think we need to to do anything with the mirrors. Okay, so it sounds like everyone so far who's spoken is in agreement that we should not take a technical stance. Do we want to take a non-technical stance such as the CentOS um, project community is a safe space and we will not tolerate any bullying or breaches of the code of conduct in regards to this issue? Um, Do we have a precedent of I, public statements around, like, and there's not really a similar situation, but around, like, non-project concerns, let's say? I would think I'm we not, would need to go back to September 11th, to be honest with you. Celeste, what were you going to say? Um, just... I assume that there are meeting notes. Can you put a note that I'm abstaining from this conversation due to my prior and current positions? I used to work for the government and I still kind of do. Okay, totally Thanks. understandable. And we may not make any decisions and we may not do anything, but it was brought up to our attention. So we needed to discuss it. And it definitely sounds like we don't wanna take any technological decisions and it may be that we don't want to take any stance at all and there's no precedence for us to take any stance. I, I think there's some precedent, for, not necessarily within CentOS, but within open source projects of making political statements, putting banners on sites or something uh, in, support of, in support of or in a, opposition to uh, certain bills or other things, maybe that target um, groups. Um, and I don't know if CentOS as a project has ever taken part. Some projects have. Um, that said, I don't see a large presence of open source projects doing that kind of thing right now. Although everyone, I mean, everyone seems to be on the same side on it, but I don't see like the, you know, turning your website into a Ukrainian flag or anything as a thing that's happening on a wide scale. No, I haven't seen any of that. Um, mainly, I think groups are just doing, you know, making sure that they're a safe place and that they won't tolerate anything. Um, and that should go for any issue. We will not tolerate any breaches of the code of conduct. So, all right, yeah, so I at this time we do not have a stance, I think. Yeah, I, I think on that point, the code of conduct is really our uh, sort of measure of standard here. Um, as we try to sort of stay in our lane, there are certain things that are just not welcome in our community. And one of them is, attacking people and bullying them for their positions. And that remains true no matter what those positions are. Correct. All right, so we'll get those notes I, added. I, Who was that? Uh, so we're talking about this, we seem to be, 
casting this in terms of the code of conduct, which I guess makes sense, but I wonder if it, is there or has there been an issue, a code of conduct issue related to this? That, that, that I missed, or is this uh, a theoretical? No, there have been no issues, anything except this ticket being opened. Okay. So we're following that there is no technical um, decision to be made at this time. We are not gonna lock anybody down and we're just going to hold to the code of conduct should there be an issue between individuals. And we'll get notes and update the ticket. And I'd say leave it open for now. Once we get the comments in, like leave it open until at least for a couple of weeks, see if there's any feedback back, and then we'll close it out. Moving on to ongoing issues. Um, number 67, trusting the SIGs by default from a CentOS project perspective, secure boot. Do we have any updates? Uh, nothing really exciting for this group. I know that we've, um, there's a, um, a group internal to Red Hat who makes recommendations about um, uh, our architectures from an information security and a product security perspective. And we've talked with them uh, a little bit about, you know, getting some of, uh, some of their best practices in mind for things like this. So uh, right now, some of the, um, the, the folks that are traditionally involved in signing for secure boot, they've got a few other things going on at the moment. And so I haven't checked up with them recently, but I'll take it, uh, that as something to do over the next month or so and report back next meeting. Okay, and we're still waiting for hardware. Okay. Number 79, recording historical SIG membership. Yeah, I think there's not a lot of update on, on the bagger ticket uh, for this month. I've asked for a, an opinion. Uh, they've got three proposals up for a, a way of going about this. And uh, there's a, a simple one where we just check out fast JSON and do that one for now. Uh, more complex integration with uh, the badges system uh, sort of creating CentOS badges in parallel to what Fedora badges is, or some sort of new and fancy thing. I like the idea of two, but it sounds like number one is the way to go, at least in the short term. Yeah. Because it sounds, it looks like significant work is required. Yeah, as I hadn't really looked at Fedora badges before, and that does look like it would be a great thing to have for CentOS, but given their comment that it's going to be a while on the time frame, and I don't want to lose the records that we have today of our users. As each of these people are stepping up to make contributions, and I want to make sure that they get counted if they want to be counted. So I suppose to put it into a something we can act on. Is there any objection with saying for now let's go with number one and revisit when they've got some time on their hands? Yeah, and I was actually typing that as a comment right now. Um, I put with the hope of implementing number two down the road. Okay. Okay. What well, what's the next step on this on this ticket, uh, Pat? Are you going to just update them? Yeah, I will go ahead and update them. Thank you. Okay, I'll remove my comment then because I hadn't hit enter yet. Well, you, if you've got it typed, I say go for it. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to make work for you. I was already typing while I was reading. And I'll read it back as because I'm typing it differently this time. Should we close this ticket at the board level then and follow up um, for future improvement on, on, on the technical side? 
because I don't think we will bring a lot more value discussing that over the month, right? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe we just leave it open until number one is implemented. Okay. Just to keep a record of it. And then once number one is implemented, we'll close it down. Um, so the new comment is the board feels that number one is the best option to get this implemented with revisiting number two down the road. Okay. Sounds great to me. Yeah. I have a question. Sorry. Um, as an even faster solution, I I feel like we talked about this, but I've forgotten. Why is this not something we just do on the wiki pages? As people are not going to keep those up to date. Um, users forget that they're there, and it's not uh, strictly authenticated. Um, I haven't done any work for the hyperscale SIG, but they've got a lot of great press. And if I was feeling nefarious, I could give myself an entry on their wiki, theoretically. And that would uh, not be fair to them because I haven't done any work for them. And the same goes for people who don't want to be identified with the SIG, but they still want to participate. Somebody might put their name on a wiki and they don't realize it because they didn't check that page. And, and this is why our strong references are actually on our website that's managed by our group project on Pagar.io. So yeah, the, the wiki in general is not in great shape. Um, the stuff on 6.centos.org um, that was set up a while ago for documentation is much more pleasant to use. Uh, so at least on the hyperscale side, we're using that as much as possible and just have the, the like front page on the wiki that all the six have. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm in favor of having this recording somewhere that is not the wiki because the wiki isn't pretty okay. really awesome right now. Also half the time I can't even log into the wiki. It, it breaks when I try to log in. So I can't even update anything, even if I wanted to. I'm hearing we want to get rid of the wiki. I'm, I have to take a call. I think everybody always wants to get rid of the wiki. I mean. It's bad wiki software. It's actually on my list, so. It's, wikis are a wonderful place to keep a bunch of great community generated thoughts and ideas when they're maintained. And when the wiki software works. Yeah, and uh, technical documentation ages like milk. Um, and so you, it's, if they're not actively maintained, they slowly become a source of used to be okay practices and now not so much. And that could also be said about Moin Moin. Yeah, and we're not the only community that has this view on wikis. I mean, it's a general feeling about wikis in general. Yeah, when they're kept current and up to date, they're amazing. And when they're not, well, they're not. All right, do we have any other comments on this subject? All right, moving on to number 78, clarify CentOS errata policy. This one is on me and I meant to update it from the last meeting and I completely forgot. So I would try to remember to update that in time for the next meeting. Okay. So moving on to open issues, number 71, using the new brand word mark typeface with the old logo as a tra transitional measure. And it sounds like it's still ongoing, awaiting on the proof of concept with new typeface before reviewing. Do we have any more updates than that? I haven't seen that uh, person around lately, so. Uh... I, I hope that they're doing well. It looks cool now, but I, I always hesitate to judge incomplete work because it could look cooler when they're doing more things to it. I'm not a graphic designer. I don't know what makes things look neat. Should we ask for an like update from them? Or like I remember there was a presentation to the board a while ago on the logo and stuff. Um, like, well, I'm skimming these and it looks fine to me, but yeah, I'm not sure if it's done or if something is required from us or. 
Yeah, it does definitely doesn't hurt to just circle around and go, hey, is there any update on this? Elaine has posted recently to Twitter about some of the stuff he's done. So I would very much just like to have the whole logo and design and everything. It's been languishing for a very long time and I'd like to just have it um, done. Yeah, because it'd be nice oh, yeah. to be able to make new swag and stuff with the new logo. Because I don't think we want to invest the money in older. Should we ask Alain an update for next meeting? Yes. I think yeah. Please, at least, can we just update the word mark? It looks so bad compared to all the rest of the stuff that we have. I don't even care if we change the logo mark, just change the word mark. I would also like to update the, the, the logo too, but like, if we can't do that, just the word mark would be enough for me. Okay. All right, who wants to take the action item on that? I can if needed. So I asked him last month for a thing and I didn't get a response. So I'd say if someone else can try. Okay, okay. Sean, okay. do you want to do that or do you want me to? Yeah, I can tell the Sorry, looking for the other button. one. I had that. I had to tap my way over to unmute. I was looking at the issue. Uh, I can do it if you want, that's fine. Okay. So Sean yeah, will take uh, yeah, that action item. Um, so moving on number 45, CentOS variant artifacts, branding and David, did you add that comment that was added? That you uh, I need comment and rebase the thing. It just needs to be merged. So someone that has merged privileges for that repo, please merge it. Um, okay. I think you see there, Brian or Fabian should have that. All right, so it sounds like that can be, once it's merged, we can close out number 45. Yeah, there was no change to the wording beyond like a couple of rebases. Okay, and are the following issues still on hold? Number three, number four, 27 and 80. Does anyone have anything on those? I think those are all still, I will I note hope. that one of our community rebuilds uh, got their images into the Windows subsystem for Linux. And so uh, we, we wish them well and uh, we would love to repeat that success. Are these still blocked on legal? I think so. I am perfectly equipped to make said images if we can actually have the okay to make said images. Is there a way we can get some people on a video conference to just see what we can do to help? And is, I don't is think there's anything that, yeah, I don't think there's anything that we can do from, from this group to, uh, okay. like there, there's no activity that we could take from this group that would help anything move along. Yeah, Jack, uh, Jack offered to do that himself at the last meeting and the same feedback was given. It's appreciated, but it's not going to move the needle. Okay. All right, so those four issues will remain on hold. So now we are on to community architect updates. Sean? No, oh, yeah. Um, let me find that tab. Oh, I, um, okay, so just a few things. I, I put in there a link to um, the, the um, RHEL docs work that's been, um, the, the RHEL docs team has been working on upstreaming. To CentOS, so um, I'd, I've already emailed this to the the CentOS docs list, and I just thought I'd bring it up if anyone wants to look at it. Um, it's not finished, but it's it's coming along real nice. Um, uh, board office hours. I sent around a poll, 
and it looks like um, Thursday at 1400 UTC is the best time. Uh, sorry, Josh, uh, but everyone else that uh, replied seems available. Um, so I guess we'll go with that. I'm not entirely sure if we'll be able to, because um, we want it to be on the Thursday on the week following this Wednesday meeting, but there's no way with the um, calendaring software to uh, encode that information. Like we can mark it as third Thursday, but then if you have a week that starts on a, or month that starts on a Thursday, then it would, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Anyway, um, next Thursday said, on the, yeah. You said the video ones, right? Not the IRC ones. This is the, yeah, the video board office hours. I dropped the IRC office hours that was at uh, 4 a.m. my time from the calendar because yeah. nobody ended them ever. Uh, so this is the yep. board office hours, and then there's also the stream office hours that happened earlier today, and those uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, are fine in that time slot. Um, so I will uh, figure that out and get that scheduled. So but it will be Thursday the um, 21st at 1400 UTC, um, and that should give people time to read minutes or watch the recording of this video, which I'm sure is a very exciting thing to do. Um, and then what else did I have? Um, oh, the HackMD team I noticed has, um, it still has as admins, Rich and Jim. Um, and I don't know if the board wants to remove them as admins. I'm not like, I mean, they don't freak me out or anything, but I don't know if we wanna keep that uh, just as a matter of practice or if the HackMD, we want to be more open than other things. We Matt. should probably keep the list yep. somewhat clean, um, yep. but I don't have a strong feeling either way. I think we Matt. should remove people and it should be part of the process of uh, removing a director. Okay. Sounds consenting. So I'll, I'll take care of that. Um, and the other thing is uh, DEF CONF US happens in, is happening in Boston this year. Um, uh, August 18th to the 20th and looked at doing a, uh, a dojo um, around that either the day before on the 17th, which would be a Wednesday or on the 21st, which is a Sunday. And I'm not sure if middle of the week or weekend is better. It kind of depends on who the um, target audience is there. Um, Additionally, it's done on a weekend. Yeah, yeah, that works, you know, a lot better for a lot of people, including if you want to grab like college students and stuff. Um, I know sometimes people who are doing it like for their job kind of resent having to work on a weekend, but I think that's just the nature of working in open source. Um, um, but if we're going to be here for it's Saturday, fine, it's fine either really? way in practice. If you, if you have to do it on a weekend, take a swap day at your work. No. Yeah, most, most work day, most reasonable companies have some way of accounting for the you doing that um yeah. but devconf is traditionally aimed at at the collegiate and so uh, optimizing for their availability tends to make sense so i would assume that putting it on weekends fine the centos dojo tends to precede it which winds up landing on usually a thursday um because then i think the first is first day is on a friday and the second day is on a saturday and people yeah like tend to leave on Sunday or whatever. Um, I think that's how they tend to split the difference, but it's also this been one. like two years since I've been to, to one of yeah. these. <laughs> yeah. So I've also been like, you know, this has been kind of on my radar of a thing to do, but I haven't committed to it because like, like, okay, the spike's going down. Are we going to see another spike? Am I, you know, and so I've been hesitant mm -hmm. to actually commit, but um it looks like DevConf is going forward, and so I, I kind of want to uh, just go ahead and do that. So we can, I can work out details over email or whatever. Um, I did also want to check if the board is interested in uh, how many people from the board would attend if we did a dojo, and if the board would want to do um, a, a a a something besides the dojo, like that is just the board. Um, and it could be a strategy planning session or it could just be a social, um, but like a, a board activity. Face to face, basically. Yeah, face nice to face. Face to face. That's what we call it in yeah. the OpenSUSE project. We're like, so for the OpenSUSE conference, 
So I got to fly to Nuremberg for this, but we're going to have a few days before the OpenSUSE conference. I'm going to have a face to face with the other board members and we're going to discuss strategic things, the last minute things that we will inevitably have to do for the conference itself and all that other fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the we no, should the definitely board do does the same thing as Plotnet. So, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. We we should definitely have do some work there, but also do some social and team bonding because most of us I have not met any of you in person that I know of. Um so it'll be a good chance, you know, for everyone to meet each other and get to know each other, you know, and get some work done. So that is also something to take into consideration whether we decide on that Wednesday or on Sunday. Um, and does also anyone have any issues with working on Sunday should we choose to have the dojo on Sunday? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's just a question of figuring out who all can attend and what works best. So figure that no matter what, I think actually it almost seems like earlier in the week would be better so that we could have our meeting our day and then have the dojo the next day or vice versa. No, it would make sense to do it that way and then move into DevConf, I think. Could also consider, uh, like you could also consider that the board meeting might conflict with some of DevConf if that makes it easier for people. Um, I don't have to attend every single day of DevConf. I'm not gonna make the dojo conflict because then we're competing for Right. So we, yeah, we could overlap with it depending on what the schedule is for DevConf, but we won't know that until closer. Yeah, CFP ends this weekend. If anybody wants to submit something to DevConf, CFP ends on the 15th. I might. I need to get like brain cells in like 10 minutes to figure out whether I'll have something to put together, but <laughs> I kind of want to. I'm hoping to do a couple for open source Europe. Uh, Sean, do you think we should also plan a virtual dojo at some point? Because we have plan where should we plan a remote dojo like we did before and hoping because those had like significant attendance. They they totally did, yeah. Um, and so like the last one we did was around FOS because we've traditionally just done FOS them and so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so maybe we should have a a regular cadence of remote dojos, even as we return to doing some in-person stuff. Um, and maybe some, having them yeah. midway between the two live ones. Yeah. So October time frame can... for virtual, and then mm. March April for May a second one. Last last year, I think. Yeah, it, it would be nice because uh, our budget for traveling this year have been a bit uh, in in like uh, complicated uh, discussion because money have been balanced around because of COVID. So for for me, uh, going to the US this year will likely be hard. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, I I can still check how to do that. Yeah, it looks like the last year we did one on May thirteenth. It'd be a little quick, but could we organize that would one be in time? A little uh, tight at this point, so but uh, okay. Yeah, and we can go into summer. I don't think we're conflicting with anything too much, except people's you know vacation, and it's just yeah. Well, you also probably don't want it too close to the one at DevConf because otherwise right. the book material will be yeah, yeah. I wouldn't go all the way to August. No, I was thinking like June or something. I think we'd still be uh, yeah. We could do that either June or yeah. Yeah, June probably works. Otherwise, we can do something after in like October. Um, but that tends to be easier conference wise. I know I've got two conferences in person in June, but one oh, of them yeah. is just up the road in Austin. Uh, the only one I have currently is, as I said earlier, the OpenSUSE conference. I fly out there on the last week of May, and I'm there until the second, until I return back to the states uh, midweek of the second week of june yeah i think second week of june Ooh, uh, i'm only gonna be a few hours away from you neil i'll be in berlin yeah oh for the open stack open infra summit right nice. that flows immediately after the open SUSE conference so if you're there early you could come and swing by uh and say hello 
I don't I will think... be there a little early, but I have to. I know on Saturday I need to solidify some things. Um, so more con- there's a holiday on Monday. So more concretely, I will be in Germany from May 29th to June 7th. Okay, so, so we do have a little overlap. Yeah. I Maybe literally booked a plane flight today. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can eat halfway. Yes, we could at least have sausages and bread. <laughs> yeah, right. I would be at scale in July, I think, unless it gets moved again. I think they're trying really, really hard to not move scale again. Yep, that's my understanding. Um, are we going to have a Santos booth there, actually? Um, does somebody want to, when they moved scale, they moved it to the week that I already have family vacation planned. So, um, I had intended to go to scale, but I, I, my family. What is the schedule? When is it? Um, Uh, July something. Uh, I'll look it up. Yeah. So I will be there and I'm happy to help, but I'll also be helping with the Facebook booth. So I can't commit to doing the send of stuff by myself. But if someone else wants to join and help, I'm happy to help out. So we um, did not so. have, uh, I went in 2020 and we didn't have a dedicated uh, CentOS booth. There was a Red Hat booth and you know there was some CentOS swag there. Um, if we want to do a CentOS booth, um, we can um, make that happen and I can send stuff out, but I can't be there. Is there, a, is, a, is there gonna be a Fedora booth there? I don't know the answer, but I do know that the, there was not a dedicated Fedora booth in 2020. It, okay. Was just a red uh, just if, if there was a Fedora booth, then probably there are at least a few people who live on the Fedora site who'd also be happy to like, you know, do CentOS things too. So that's always an option as well. If there is a Fedora booth, maybe, you maybe know, see if- a shared booth, maybe just yeah. put, the, put yeah. the budget on it. Um, yeah. I can ask them. On that. I know oh, that they've been go to for a couple of other events in the past, so it's a it's a workable option. Yeah, it sounds like it's worth looking into whether we have the people who can do it or not. We'll find out. Um, even if it's just sending swag and asking for it to be handed out by another group that we're associated with, which brings us back to needing the new logo. <laughs> and uh, there probably will be a red hat booth and you know so they'll have like the hex stickers but they're not going to be you know super talking about centos they'll just give out some stickers yeah. i'm happy to talk about centos about the facebook booths but handing out centos work from there it doesn't seem like the right thing right yeah all right do we have anything else on the community architect updates just keeping track of time and we have eight minutes. All right, and it doesn't look like we have any SIG reports. So any other business, anything anyone else wants to discuss? So I have a question about two emails that we've received to the board list about removing personal data. I've, you guys have been around longer than I, is that a bot? Is that like an automated form? Because they don't look like real people, but if they are, I don't want to ignore it. This is, okay. Um, so I'm also on the gnome board list and we get multiple of these a week. And it's, there are some service out there where people who want their data erased, put their name in, and then it just emails freaking everything it can find telling mm-hmm. them to remove them without seemingly without ever checking if it, there is data they don't even on look them. like real names or real people yeah and so but they they seem to be real and uh well i don't i don't know uh i can tell you what the gnome board does is the i think the i think neil the executive director uh replies for each one of them and and says please tell me which data we have on you and i'll take care of it and if they you know actually reply something, then he'd take care of it, but nobody has. So okay. I don't Versus know. Versus any other plan. <laughs> uh, I mean, do, we can definitely want follow to reply to them or do you want to ignore them?
I'm sorry, Amy. I, I mean, they kind of look spammy, but I mean, it's not a high volume. We can always, I mean, uh, I can take the action. I, I, I checked the name. I checked the name and it appeared nowhere related to CentOS. Huh? So I'm, I'm, I'm not too worried. I think we should ignore it. If one day we see a, a name that we know, um, I would just reply and say, okay, uh, let us know where you want to disappear from. And uh, that's it. But uh, I think those particular things on the generic uh, service that uh, send uh, email uh, just to, to comply with GDPR, I think that a lot of websites like that uh, pop out, at least in Europe. Okay, I just wanted to check. I assumed anybody serious would submit a board ticket requesting removal rather than a spam, so. Or at least they would send another one if we didn't react to the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also seeing a bunch of weird emails on like paid blog promotion and like other stuff that then I'm just trashing outright. Yeah, I've been seeing lots of things in languages I do not read. I do the same thing for the email I get for the Magia and OpenSUSE board. It's a lot and not helpful. So I'm, I, may, um, I may make a suggestion here. Uh, th this may be a topic that we wanna come back around on next month. Like I can check about, because we have some, uh, we have some processes internal to the community platform engineering team that we need to take for uh, legitimate GDPR requests. And we can go through and make sure that we don't have data uh, assigned to either an email address or a name or something like that. But uh, I think we should clarify this because it used to be um, th that stuff would funnel through the Red Hat liaison and then the engineering teams would go and make sure that we didn't have records related to that. But uh, this may be a topic for next meeting. I'll dig up some, uh, some of our processes there. Yeah, okay. That'd be awesome. And just for, just for the record, we've, we've had, uh, I remember processing like dozens of these myself. We've never had, uh, a legitimate, um, uh, a legitimate request tied to anyone who's done anything in the CentOS project. So, um, it's not very common at least. Good to know. All right. Do we have any other new business? All right, then we are done with three minutes to spare. And um, just for the record, Thomas has put in the this month's agenda the link to next month's draft agenda. So if there's anything you want to add, we can get it added there or you can add it directly. That's awesome. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the Thanks rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.